Welcome back. Today we are in the shop and we are gonna tear into some of these power stations. I have had many different brands of power stations over the years. There are a couple that have failed me and I'm gonna show you the ones that have failed me at the end of the video. I'm gonna show you my favorite power station. I've had two brands that I like the most and one that, that stands above the rest. And so I will show you my favorite brand at the end of the video. But today we're gonna to do a little bit of destruction. Let's see what we got. This is one of the first power centers I got from a brand called Oikatel. O o Oikatel, Oikatel. I don't like brands I can't pronounce, but this is what happens. It says it's 90% charged, but it only has one minute remaining. It won't let me turn anything on. It won't let me charge it. It won't let me discharge from it. Basically, there's something wrong with the control panel in here or this actual uh, circuitry and circuit board that, that controls this thing. And so something is wrong. And I have contacted the company and they wanted me to send it back to them at my own expense. I said, forget that. And so here it has sat on the shelf. This was actually a, the feature wise, this was a very nice power center. Had a little compartment on the top, had six outlets, nice 20 amp outlets. This was a big one, 2000 watts plus uh, surge. I think it would surge up higher than that, but it doesn't work. So it's no good to me. And the company's obviously not gonna help me out. So we're gonna just tear into this thing, tear it apart. What happens when a company sends me one of these that turns out not to be good is I go back to that video and I put a note that says, don't buy this one. <laughs> and then I put my favorite brand in there instead. That's very similar, but one that is more reliable. So I don't know how to take these apart. I've never, never uh, dug into one. So we're, we, we might do a little bit of prying, a little bit of exploring. I have a feeling there's some screws under these little rubber grommets. We'll start there, but let's tear into this thing, see if we can find the battery. What's it look like? The inverter. Maybe I can, maybe there's some components in here I can take out and utilize still. So let's see what's inside. All right, let's unplug it. I mean, that's seems like a good idea. Aha, there are some Allen screws in there. Okay. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot packed in here. One of the things uh, that I have learned back in the day of uh, electronics classes is that these capacitors can hold a charge for quite, a, quite some time. And so you never wanna touch anything in here. Uh, you can get quite a, quite a shock even though it's not plugged in. So it's hard to tell what everything is. I know that I need to take more things apart. Let's get all these wires unhooked. See if I can separate this this case a little bit more. The way this feels, I think the battery is on the bottom. This may be a DC input here. It's got the one, yeah, it's got a DC output here and a DC input, the charging input was there. Maybe 12 volt power supply, little cooling fan. There's lots of little parts in here I could save. It's got a couple little cooling fans, one on each side. All right, so we've got an overload protector. We've got a little reset here. This is coming from there. Of course, I'll never get this back together. That's okay, we don't need it back together. Save all these fun little components. We've got our AC input here. This is an overload protection for the input. So if it gets too much power coming into it, that immediately trips this little, little breaker. Yellow is ground, red is hot, black is common. So that's going right to our main circuit board here. A couple little DC fans, these are actually useful. This is pretty obvious, the circuit board for the uh, LED display and Looks like a couple DC components here. This is a, just a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter socket or accessory socket. This is most likely what was bad. This circuit board right here, I'm assuming. Either this board itself was bad and so it wasn't getting the correct information processed uh, to the screen so I couldn't control anything. It wouldn't let it come on. It wouldn't let it, uh, wouldn't let it function or something else on one of these other boards was misreporting to that board. I'll never know because I don't care. We've got another 
couple fans here. These look like all 12 volt DC fans and there's a bunch of them here. So that might be something I could use. Uh, this is actually really cool. This panel, uh, I might build my own new one of these down the road and I think I can use this. This is a, this is a really nice little panel. So right here, this is our AC out to our outlets here. Outlets on the back side of this. This was plugged in right here. Interestingly, there was no ground. There's no, no actual ground on there. So even though there's a ground on the outlet, they weren't really grounded to anything, which is, I guess that's fine. I wonder if there's still a way to use this as an inverter. This is most likely the, the inverter here, this whole section. I'm assuming with the largest heat sinks on here and the transformers that this is this is our 2000 watt inverter right here. So here's our DC coming in from the battery bank. Battery bank is this main section on the bottom. Looks like we've got a few screws I can take out to get those off. Let's see if we can get this uh, this off and off the battery bank. Those screws are kind of hard to take out. coming off. It's a pretty good sized battery. Huh. What I think I'm going to do, let's see if we can get this entire circuit board off the top. Let's see if something shorts out. Let's get some sparks going here. All right, now we're talking. It looks like this is our battery pack. <laughs> it looks like there might be a temperature sensor. These thin wires here. Uh, this is our main output. So I probably can just disconnect these wires and then know we've got uh, P negative and P positive. It's marked on the board. Looks like connections to each cell. Uh, this, I'm not sure how this is configured. Battery negative, battery negative that go to all the negative uh, sides of each one of those cells. And then we have battery positive and battery positive that goes to all of the positive sides of the cells. This circuit board I'm assuming is a, a type of charge, charge controller and discharge controller. I'm not sure what this is for other than maybe monitoring of each cell uh, in some kind of control because these are, th these are too thin of wires to, to run all that power through, I would think. I wonder, let's disconnect our two battery terminals here and let's see if we can charge this. I've got a, a, a universal charger here. Uh, it is a 50 volt charger so I'm not sure I have no idea what voltage this is so we'll see what happens. We, we could just we could smoke this whole thing. What I believe is our inverter. Uh, we could play with this down the road and see see if I could get this to work as a 2000 watt inverter. Just not sure where the on and off uh, controls are in this, so that would be interesting to find out. But well, after all that cutting, I kind of wish I would have left the battery in this tray. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got a couple. I can put a couple screws in here. I have to bust out some old equipment here from a, an old job that I used to have. The Geek Squad voltmeter. If I can remember how to use this thing. All right, what do we got here? Negative and positive. Let's see if there's any DC voltage range. Four volts, millivolts. <laughs> well. So I have this charger that I've used to uh, charge up the golf cart. It's, uh, oh, how many volts is this? I think it's like a 50, 52 volts. Running through the charge control and everything, this, uh, you could input that much to this thing, but we'll see. See what happens here. Nothing. <laughs> I wonder if I can charge it directly. Oh. <laughs> Maybe not. It should work. Doesn't like that either. Let's see if we can get... So I am getting some voltage off of the battery terminals directly. 
I think this is an input. Let's see if we can trick it. <laughs> I heard something pop. If this starts to push current, it'll it'll turn red. So it's not working, obviously. So I don't think I can use the inverter alone unless I do some research and figure out how the like find a schematic for this, which I doubt they release. I might be able to jump this to turn it on, but I mean, who knows? I could just be shorting stuff out. So this is what is inside a portable power station. Battery bank, circuitry to charge it, all individual cells here. Your AC outlet panels and cooling fans, DC and AC input charging ports and cooling fans. Some type of a inverter, a 2000 watt inverter. The actual LED panel and control panel circuit board is on the inside. This is just mounted on the, the back side of this panel. I think this is just a DC, uh, DC control uh, board or maybe a DC converter. Still a few things in here I can use. I will take all of these components off of their panels and I will put them all in a bin. And maybe someday I'll find a good use for all of these things. Anybody have any ideas on the battery bank? I'd love to hear from you guys what you think about that. Any way to recover this or reuse it somehow? And maybe somebody knows something about this uh, as an inverter. Maybe is there is there a way to, to, to trick it into turning on? Definitely cool little panel. I wonder if I could find a way to use all these ports on here. Well, it looks like this is pretty much useless, unfortunately. Well, there you have it. <laughs> the insides of a 2000 watt power station. So what is my favorite brand of power station? This right here is the mother of all power stations. <laughs> this is the 2000 watt, 2000 watt hour Blue Eddy power station. It has six AC outlets on it. It's got all the USB, same, all the same stuff as that other one did, but better. This one also has a wireless charger built right into the top, two of them actually. This thing is amazing. It has been super reliable. It'll power everything. Uh, I love this thing. This brand is the first brand to ever send me one of these to test, probably almost 10 years ago. And I tested it at the farm and built a solar generator. I'll link that video. I built this little solar panel cart. In fact, it's right, that wood thing right over there. <laughs> That's it. Now it's a welding cart, but that used to uh, go with a, an old Blue Eddy power, power station. I also have this smaller one, this little Blue Eddy. And this is has a wireless charger on the top. This is a little portable one. The only complaint I have about this brand is that I've had two of them that the the LED panels have gone bad. The battery indicator doesn't doesn't work. My old one's the same way. This is actually fully charged. The little bars in the middle that are supposed to be there, they don't they don't show up. You can kind of see if you press on it, they're they're in there. <laughs> it's full. But this one works great. This is a smaller one. This is a 300 watt output here. The other brand that I have had that I really like is Jackery. I got one of those as well, tested out. I donated that to the church. But that is, uh, Jackery is another really great brand. So Blue Eddy and Jackery are the two that I recommend. The other ones, uh, not so much. Power stations, power stations. They're everywhere. They're super handy. There are tons of brands out there. I've tested a few different brands over the years and the Blue Eddy is just the one that I think is the best. Hopefully you enjoyed tearing apart uh, the other one, <laughs> the one that doesn't work good. That has become mostly junk now. Some things I'll, I'll use, but uh, it's, it's mostly junk. Let me know what you guys think. Any tips and tricks on how to utilize any of those parts that I took out of that other one that may still work? Any, any little little things you can, you electronic uh, engineers out there maybe can tell me. Thanks for tagging along today for a little deconstruction. As always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.